Tuesday, March 31st. Welcome to Virtual Math, live from the Man Cave. So if you are watching this video, that means you have already completed day one of your Fantastic Five. I'm pretty sure almost every class does Fan Five in math normally. Um, if you're in my class, you kind of know how it rolls. If you're in a different class, it's probably pretty similar. What we're going to do is five questions every single day they're going to be very similar questions so really we're going to be focus on focusing on the problem solving aspect of it so let's say on monday you know you get a two or a three and you struggle maybe with two of the questions that's fine because the goal is every single day for you to improve so if you get a two on monday try to get a three on tuesday wednesday keep going up because by friday the ultimate goal would you want to be at a five and if you take notes, if you watch these videos, um, you're going to see different ways to solve the questions, which can help you get to that five. Now, your teacher may have shown you a different way to solve it, or you might just solve it a different way than I show you. That's fine. If it works, it works. Uh, it's, it's not my way or the highway. But what I'm going to try to do is I might show you one way to do it today, and then I might change it um, the next day or the day after that. So uh, before you do Tuesday's Fan Five, Hopefully, if you had a question yesterday, you can watch this video, you can get that question answered. That way, when you get to it today, you can improve and try to get it correct. Now, if you're getting a five on Monday, obviously the goal would be for you to stay getting a five for the whole week. Uh, but really the only day that matters is Friday. So we're gonna go ahead and get cracking here. I'm gonna get this pulled up. Uh, we're gonna look at number one. It says, that's not it. All right, we got Dina walked into Best Buy with $5,000. She spent $267 on a new stereo and $1,133 on a brand new TV. How much money does she have left? Hopefully you saw that word left. You instantly thought you needed to subtract. And if you look at your answer choices, they are all getting smaller. So that kind of leads you in the right path. Uh, but there's a couple ways you can get started with this one. Really, you could take your 5000 bucks and you could get rid of one at a time. Let me spend that $267, then let me spend $1,133. Or you could take the two totals, add them together, and then subtract. I think what I'll do is um, I'll add up the two totals that I spent first. So let's take our 267 bucks. And let's add it up with 1,133. And I'm actually gonna make this a little bit easier. All right, if we're adding these together, seven plus three would give you 10. Zero stays, one goes. Six plus three is nine, plus one more is 10. Zero stays, one goes. Moving into the hundreds place, I got two plus one, I'll get three. Plus one more, I'll get four. Go ahead and drop that comma down there. Bring down my one. That means I spent a total of $1,400. Now, if you're looking at your answer choices, that is an answer choice. That's A. Hopefully, you didn't just stop right there because if you did that, you didn't even uh, use the 5000 bucks that it gave you. So then I'll pull my whiteboard back up here. And this, I'm a very visual person, so I can see Dina walking into that store with 5000 bucks. I can see her spending that 1,400 to see what we have left. Now, zero minus zero, obviously it's gonna be zero. Once again, zero minus zero, gonna stay zero. And then in the hundreds place, zero, zero minus four. You've got more on the floor, you've got to go next door and you gotta get 10 more. So, that five is now gonna to change to a four. You're going to take that 10 that you took from your thousands place, add it here. That's going to change to a 10. Now you're able to subtract. 10 minus 4 is going to give you 6. 
four minus one is going to give you three. That leaves you with $3,600. So if you're looking at your answer choices, that would be D, 3,600. Again, multiple ways to do that question. Um, I'll probably just do it a different way tomorrow. Uh, subtracting across zeros can get a little bit tricky. That one didn't provide much of a challenge. I think moving forward, you're going to see there's going to be some different ways you're going to have to subtract there. All right, looking at number two, it says there are 98 people waiting in line to see Miss Letchworth uh, make TikToks. If each person waits for 23 minutes, how much time did they all wait total? Again, that word total should stand out. By the way, I need to get Miss Sletchworth's TikTok name so, you, so everybody can go follow her. Follow her. They're amazing. The fact that she hadn't gone viral yet is a joke. She's going to blow up. They're great. All right, so a couple different things you can do. Again, I'm a visual person. I can close my eyes and I can see a line of 98 people. She waited 23 minutes. He waited 23 minutes. He waited 23 minutes. All of those people waited 23 minutes. Now, total usually makes me think to add. But instead of doing 98 plus 98 plus 98 plus 98, 23 different times, repeated addition tells me I need to multiply. So I can stack them up and do 98 times 23. And look, here you might like to do your area model, your box method. Uh, I'll probably show you that way tomorrow. But for now, we got two and two stacked. Start in the ones place. We're going to go three times eight. We'll get 24. Four stays, two goes. Going across to the nine, three times nine is 27, plus two more gives me 29. Look, once I'm done with the ones place, I can go ahead and get rid of that number up at the top, and I'm going to start fresh in the tens place. Now I'm going to multiply by that two. But before I can multiply by that two, when I come down here to this second line, I've got to put a placeholder. I've got to put my zero. Some people put an X. Some people just leave it blank. Uh, but the way I think about it is if I'm multiplying in the tens place, the first number that I'm going to put down here is going to go in the tens place. So that's why I put my placeholder. So we start with the two, multiply it times eight. Two times eight is 16. Six stays, one goes. Uh, two times nine would give you 18, plus one more gives you 19. Once I get to this point, all I've got to do is add those two numbers together. So if I'm starting in the ones place, four plus zero gives me four. That's supposed to be a four. Uh, tens place, nine plus six gives me 15. Five stays, one goes. Uh, hundreds place, nine plus two is 11. Plus one more is 12. Two stays, one goes. And then one plus one gives me two to give me an answer of 2,254, which would give me B. So if you add those up, you would get the right answer. It'd take you way longer. It's so much easier to multiply. Again, I'll show you a different way to solve that one tomorrow. Uh, but for number two, you would have gotten B. And honestly, it's been a while since we've done, you know, two by two digit multiplication. So that's the reason why we're spiral, spiraling through this stuff. Uh, it may not be fresh in your brain, but the more we do it this week, I think the better off we'll get. All right. Love these questions. These, um, these multiplicative comparison questions, it's not just this year. It's every year um, throw kids off. And, and to me, it's surprising because there's really only one thing you have to do to make sure you get it right every single time. Now, obviously, if you divide wrong, you're going to miss it. But if you do the division right, there's something you can do every time to get the question right. All right, so Miss Furlow got a new house. She's packing her collection of 156 books into boxes. Each box can hold up to seven books. How many boxes will she be able to fill completely? Those are important, fill completely. Now, you see that word each. A lot of the times people think that automatically means you have to multiply. Guys, it can sometimes mean you have to divide. The one word I probably use the most in my classroom is logic. Okay, so logically, what would make sense here? Because if you did 156 times seven, you're going to get that first answer choice. You would get 1,092. But logically, would it make sense to have 1,092 boxes for 156 books? Like, that would work, but there's no way you could – first of all, it's way too many boxes. But if we're talking about filled completely, you don't have enough books to fill that many boxes. So logically, 
that one would have to go. Now remember, each can also mean to divide. So if I'm dividing, my number should be getting smaller, which all the other answer choices are. So really, I wouldn't mess with that first one. But what I would do is I would get that whiteboard going. I would take my 156 books and start putting them into equal groups of seven. 156 divided by seven. Dangerous monkey swipe banana. So we start with division. Now look, we know seven cannot go into one, but it can go into 15 twice. Because seven times two gets me to 14. That's as close as I can get. Then if I subtract 15 minus 14, that's going to leave me with one. And then I would bring down any numbers that I can, which is a six. Once I get to this point, I'm going to start over, go back to the top. Now we're dividing again. So we're going to look at 16 divided by seven. Again, seven can go in there twice because seven times two again gives me 14. And if I do that subtraction, it leaves me with two, nothing to bring down. So that means I'm finished. So 22 remainder two is not an answer choice because guys, you're not going to go to Lowe's and say, hey, I need 22 remainder two boxes. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. So that means there's only three possible answer choices. And this right here is what I mean when I say if you divide right, you will never miss it if you do this part right here. Three possible answer choices. I could ignore the remainder and say I need 22 boxes. I could use the remainder and say I need two boxes. Or I could kind of combine both of those and push up and have 23 boxes. Again, logic comes into play here. You can fit seven books in a box, right? Now, if I did two boxes completely full, that would only be 14 of my 156 books. And I could fit way more. I could fill way more many, way more boxes than two. So honestly, I wouldn't be wasting my time with two. So I've gotten rid of two answer choices. Now I'm only looking at 22 full boxes or 23 full boxes. Again, check your work with multiplication. 22 times seven, 23 times seven. Let me get rid of this. Let me start with the first. If I did 22 times seven, Seven times two is 14, or one. Seven times two again is 14, plus one is 15. If I had 22 full boxes, that would do 154 books, okay? Now if I get rid of this, and let me do 23. 23 times seven. Seven times three is 21, one stays. Two goes. Seven times two is 14, plus two is 16. Now here's the problem. If I go back to my question, it wants to know how many can I fill completely. Well guys, it is absolutely impossible to fill 23 boxes completely because you don't have 161 books. You would have 22 full boxes but we had 22 remainder two, those two that you had left over, if it said how many boxes would I need total, then you would push up and get 23. But if it wants to know what I'm going to fill completely, that one's gonna be 22. And I tell my kids all the time, when you do that division uh, and you end up with 22 remainder two, if it's ever asking what's left over or what remains, it would always be that number. If it's talking about what's full, it will always be this number. So looking at your answer choices, it had to be 22 full boxes, which would have been B. I can very easily see how somebody would choose 23 there. Um, and I would just chalk that up as a reading mistake. You really got to make sure you're reading those questions. Now, tomorrow, it's going to be the same type of question, but it might ask what's left over or how many boxes would you need? It all comes down to reading. But if you divide correctly and you check with multiplication, you're golden. All right, number four, uh, this one just comes down to knowing your facts. It says, which choice below is a multiple of six, meaning when you multiply by six, you're falling on these numbers, and a factor of 36, meaning you can multiply this number to get 36. So they're different. They're very similar, but they are different. So what I would do is I would just start with the first part. I would start with the multiples of six. 
Now, the very first multiple of six is six because six times one is going to give you that. So, and look, you don't have to make a list up to 100. Look at your answer choices. The biggest number is 24. So I'm going to get two or as close to as I can get with 24. So let me open up my whiteboard. Let's list some multiples. All right, so six times one gives me six. Six times two gives me 12. Six times three is 18. Six times four is 24. That's all I have to do for my multiples is six. I got that very easily. Now let's see if we can eliminate some answer choices. Uh, eight is not a multiple of six. We did not land on that. That would have been gone. Nine is not a multiple of six. We didn't land on nine. I would have gotten rid of that. Now I can't eliminate 12 or 24 because both of those are multiples of six. Now I can look at the second part. Now I can look at, hey, which one of those is a factor of 36? And this is why multiplication makes everything so much easier. Guys, you can do 12 times three and you're gonna get 36. You cannot do 24 times anything to get 36 because 24 times one gives you 24. 24 times two is gonna take you straight to 48. That would not work. It would go beyond what you needed to get. So that answer choice would have been C12. Again, I'm sure your teacher has said it as much as I have. Study those multiplication cards. If you know your facts, it honestly, not just in fourth grade, but it's going to make almost everything you do in math so much easier, not beyond fifth, sixth, middle school, high school, honestly. Last question, number five. Man, to me, this one's an effort question. You're going to get it right if you're willing to do the work. Like if you just choose the one that says, ooh, I'm looking for 4,248. I'm just going to choose an answer choice that has those numbers. There's a high likelihood that you'll miss it every time. It doesn't have to use the exact same numbers. All you have to do is add up exactly what it says you have. So A says I've got four thousands. Guys, just write the number four and then add that many zeros. A thousand has three zeros. There's my four thousands. It says I have 2,400. So again, I'm going to write down 24. 100 has two zeros. I'll put two zeros. And it says I have eight ones. Well, that's just an eight. <laughs> So if I added those together, that's going to give me 6,408. So even though it uses the same numbers that I'm looking for, it goes way beyond what I actually need. So A would be gone. All right, same deal for B. It's using those same numbers, but I've got four thousands, two hundreds, 48 tens. I'd write the number 48 and add one zero. Same deal, add those together. Look, that gets me close, but 4,680 still goes beyond what I need. All right, so two down, now we're gonna look at C. We got 3,000s, 2,400s, and eight ones. Add those together. 5,408 goes beyond what I actually need. Now, even though we feel pretty good about eliminating those, and obviously we're going to be left with the correct answer, you should still check it because I make mistakes every day. It's very possible you could have made a mistake. So we'll check D. You've got 4,114 tens and eight ones. And if I add those together, that proves my answer. It gave me 4,248, which would have been D as that answer. So look, if you got a five today, awesome. The expectation would be that you get a five for the rest of the week. Honestly, I tell my kids on a Monday, I'm not really expecting it to be super high. If you're getting a three or a four, that's pretty good. Uh, but don't get upset or frustrated if you're sitting at a zero or a one or a two because guys you can go back and watch this video again if you need to um, there's really no excuse to not show any improvement I don't care if it's a zero to a one if you go up one point you're moving in the right direction because remember you've got five days to try to get up there to that five by Friday which is the only day that matters so hopefully this answered any questions you might have and look and if it didn't shoot me a message, shoot your teacher a message. Um, 
anything we can do to maybe make this a little bit easier for you, let me know. Um, but just to warn you, there's going to be weeks where these are really challenging. On a Monday, you might really struggle. But again, you've got five days to try to kind of study the film, get some extra practice, and by that time Friday comes around, you'll be good to go. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow.